Today, I'm going to be talking about these, the new Fat Shark Dominator FPV goggles that are compatible with the Avatar system from Walksnail. Now, this video isn't my review, it's not a technical deep dive, we're going to be talking about the chipset. Now, for those who follow the channel regularly, you've known that I've talked about this a bit. I put out an article with the help of Junus discussing what's going on in DJI and what we think is going on here. Further to that, we now have teardown images of these goggles and I've actually seen some stuff for myself and we now have a bit more information that is rather interesting to say the least. There is a massive amount of info starting to float around the internet on this and today I want to try and put things into context and just try to explain what the situation is as we understand it, the why that may be the case and then let you make your own mind up. I'm going to not give you my opinion today. I am simply going to share with you some possible reasons for why we've seen what we've seen. And they won't be every reason out there, but they are some of the more likely ones to say the least. So, the first thing we're gonna do is just take a quick look at the what first of all, what is the chipset and explain that, and then we'll move forward from there. Okay, so to start, for those who follow the channel regularly, you'd have known I've been discussing all of the ins and outs of what we think is going on with these new goggles. And I actually put up quite a big article on a number of places, including on Rotor Riot, discussing this. And this one here, as you can see, which is the history of the DJI wireless system and is walk snail using DJI technology. We go on to talk about lead core, artisan, and all of the background as we understood it. And we basically came to the conclusion after all of the investigation that it was extremely likely that Fat Shark Walk Snail are using the Artisan chipset in these goggles. Now, I can say at this point, we believe that is the case. We believe it is correct for many reasons, although there are some things that bring that into question and raise some interesting other questions as well. So if I hop over, to this image here. This is a teardown image of these new goggles from Fat Shark, and this is the main SOC on the device. There are no additional overall SOCs there. There's just one main SOC with some RAM and some cache and some other stuff, and we'll talk about that in a later video. But note that there is one main chipset on this device, and you can see it here with the paste on top. Now, if you just look at that on a surface level, the chipset looks exactly as we were expecting it to and being that AR8211 or something like that from Artisan. If I just show you a picture of their chipset, you can see it there, the AR8211, the overall IHS on the top, which is the heatsink, the overall look of the chipset is very much the same it basically is identical. However, as you may have just had a sneak peek of, when the paste was removed, we got a little bit of a surprise. Now, this is what the chipset looks like. It has been verified multiple different ways, and you can see that it is labeled up as a Xilinx Vertex 5 FPGA. The model number they've labeled it as is the XC5VLX50T. Now, this literally caused us all to jump back and sort of try and figure out what the hell was going on here because A, that chipset makes no sense because that's a very old FPGA. There's no way as we understand it it could do that. I've actually reached out to some people in the industry who understand this stuff massively, and all of the noise I've got is that is not that FPGA, and even if it was that FPGA, it cannot do what is being asked to do in this situation. So, that leaves us with one other scenario that the chipset is labeled incorrectly. It is not the Xilinx chipset, it is something else. As for what that something else is, at the moment, all of the indications are is that it is that Artisan chipset, possibly 
that AR8211. Again, if I show you it, you can see there, it is very, very similar. What also really does back up the fact that it isn't the FPGA is that that FPGA was never made in this style of package. If we actually take a look at this image for a basically similar model, it's a completely different chipset, different size IHS, different size and shape overall. It just makes no sense at all from the packaging, but also the actual capability of that FPGA, that it is that. So what we can say from it at the moment is it isn't an FPGA, it is simply mislabeled. So this then leads on to the next question of the why. Why would the chipset be incorrectly or mislabeled? Now, there are a million different possibilities for this. I have spoken to so many people. There are so many opinions online. It is incredible just how far this rabbit hole goes. There are some plausible ones, which I'm just going to touch on in a minute. And there are also some rather extreme ones as well, which I'm not going to get into. But the simple reality is right now, we don't know. A manufacturer may choose to change how their chipset looks or hide how it looks for a number of reasons. They may not want someone to know what the chipset is. That is usually done by the chipset being simply unmarked or having random markings on board or it actually later being etched to actually mask the markings like we see on some TBS receivers. It is unusual to have a chipset with a label that is wrong in the sense of it's made to look like something else. We're not talking here that the chipset simply has a label we don't understand. It appears that a chipset has been given the label to intentionally misdirect what it is. As for why that has happened, we simply don't know. I've been told there are valid reasons for that happening at the process of manufacture. For instance, if you're having engineering samples made, you may choose to save cost by having reused IHSs installed with incorrect labeling. This isn't something that would usually go out into production and it would usually be something simply for in-house. Now, this doesn't align with the fact that we haven't seen this FPGA in that package. Everything we've seen for that is completely different. So why would there be IHSs with that labeling on when that IC has not been made in that package style before? If it's not that, then it only leaves a few other reasons. Possible a mistake where the wrong file was selected on etching, or it's been done intentionally to misdirect someone from understanding what the IC is. Whether you would go to that effort to do it just to hide it from us, the FPV community, I don't know. And this raises wider questions that we simply don't have the answer to. Was it done by the manufacturer of the chipset or was it done later by the manufacturer of the goggles? Again, we simply don't know. All the options are as valid as each other. There is no reason really to believe it's been done for intentional misguided nasty reasons than it is simply something like engineering overrun or even a mistake. The thing I also want to add on this is this may never be fully understood because the reality is no matter what is said right now, people may not believe the truth anyway. I personally have my opinions on the situation, but that isn't to say they are correct. And there are many, many reasons, as I've already said, for this to be happening. It is really down to how you feel about the company or the manufacturer with regards to what you're going to believe is the case. A company can choose to mislabel or relabel their chipset in any way they wish. The implications of that are unknown compared to say having a chipset that has no label on at all compared to labeling it by someone else. But the reality is right now, what we do know is we have a chipset that appears to be from Artisan with a label from a different manufacturer. But as for the why, we don't know, 
and probably never will. So what next? Well, the reality is what is written on that chipset really doesn't change a lot for the system itself as we know. There's no reason to think this is going to cause any problems. And right now we're in the position of trying to understand how the system actually works and where it's going to be developed moving forward. It is easy to get stuck down the rabbit hole on this stuff. And if you're someone like me, you will find this super interesting and you want to understand more. But at the end of the day, we also have to talk about the product. We have to understand how the product works and hopefully it will become a very viable competitor to the likes of DJI, HD Zero, and maybe even Orca when they release in the future. I'm going to be uploading a load of stuff on repair.wiki myself on this as soon as I possibly can. And if you're interested in seeing that, there will be links to that in the comment section of this video. I hope this has explained things a little bit clearer than it might have been before for you. I have intentionally not gone too far down the rabbit hole on this one because the simple fact is we don't know and we probably never will. And that is the best place right now to leave this. If you found this content interesting, please do consider hitting the subscribe button. If you want to support me because I've bought these goggles myself, there are links to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee in the description. It's only by you guys using them am I able to keep making content like this. Again, all of my stuff is coming. Stay tuned, stay safe, and I will speak to you soon.